Well, praise the Lord, everyone. Amen. Come on, we can do better than that. Somebody say, praise the Lord. Amen. How many of you are excited about being in the house of the Lord? Amen. On this special revival night, on a Sunday night. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Amen. Just to come give him some praise and give him some glory. Amen. Let's put our hands together one more time and give him a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Let's just lift our voice and go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we love you. God, we thank you, Lord, for your presence that we feel today. God, we ask you, Lord, that your perfect will will be done in this house tonight. God, not our will, but your will. And we'll be sure to give you the praise and glory. Worship the Lord.
Hallelujah. Come on, if you come to praise the name of the Lord, why don't you lift your voice right now and begin to magnify the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords who is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. I don't know what you've come to do in the house tonight, but I come to praise the name of my God. I come to lift him up and give him all the praise and all the glory. For he is worthy to be praised. And we just come to praise the name of God. Lift him up and give him praise. Shine! 
to the Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Behold, he comes shining like a shining on the, riding on the clouds. He's coming back. We just had that end time prophecy about the Lord coming back. And yes, I, I forgot the words that quickly. But one thing I'm not going to forget it's the day that God filled me with the gift of the Holy Ghost. And I believe that God has ordained the steps of everything that's happened up to this moment, this weekend. And I can tell you this, that the Lord has touched me tremendously yesterday and today to hear of the great things that God is doing in the kingdom of God. Through the Bible studies that have been taught on the end time prophecies, I enjoy prophecy, but what I enjoy more than that, and I talked to Brother Dave Robbins today, he, he's okay with people getting that knowledge. That's fine. But what means more to him than anything else is that you make it to heaven. And that's why I'm here tonight. My goal is to make it to heaven. But my other goal is to make sure that my family makes it to heaven. And my other goals are to make sure that I can help you make it to heaven. 
And we should want to help each other make it to heaven. He said, encourage each other with these words. When we rise to meet him in the air, when the Lord comes back, what a day that's going to be when we see Jesus face to face. We want to go ahead and take up our tithes and offering tonight. If we could have our ushers to come and do that for us. I'm excited. I mean, I'm truly excited. There's something inside of me that just feels like it's about to explode. God is doing some great things, and I'm excited to be a part of it. I'm excited to be in Calvary Pentecostal Church tonight. We're here on a Sunday night. How, how good does it feel to be in the house of God on a Sunday night? It's been a long time. Hopefully we can have more of these soon. Let's pray for this offering. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I ask you to touch this offering. Lord, that you would bless the givers tonight. Lord, open our minds and our hearts to receive what you have for us. But Lord, help us to give to you tonight with, with a cheerful heart, Lord, to be a cheerful giver, knowing that you're going to bless this for your kingdom and you will use it where it needs to be used. And we ask it in the wonderful name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we pray it. Amen. Go ahead, brother. We have prayer requests tonight. There's a lot of needs. Um, I got a message from Brother Bryant. Uh, if he's watching tonight, I want him to know that we are praying for him. His health is in bad shape. He's going through a lot. Remember Brother Bryant tonight, Brother and Sister Reed, those that are suffering, those that are in pain. Um, they're, they're, we could go around the room right now and name. There could be hundreds of people named that we need to pray for. And I believe that we serve a God. I say it a lot, and I still, I'll, I'll always believe it. If he never answers another prayer from me, he is a prayer answering God. He doesn't have to do anything else for me. He's done enough already, more than I could ever deserve. But I believe tonight that when we come before him in faith believing that God will touch these needs, they're listed on the board. And if you have a need in this place tonight, let it be known by the lifting of your hands. And when you do that, let it go, let that hand be raised in faith. That when you raise your hand, whether it's for you or someone that you know needs a touch from God, that when we begin to pray in Jesus' name as the Bible instructs us to do, that the Holy Ghost is going to fall on these knees and He's going to touch and minister and heal. Let's, let's go to God right now and help us pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that you touch these needs. Every name that's on this board here, God, you know every situation. You know every sickness and every pain. Lord, you know those that need to be delivered, God. And I pray a special touch on Brother and Sister Reed and Brother Bryant tonight and those that are recovering from sickness. And Lord, I pray for this community, Lord. Lord, we come here yesterday and today to learn more of you. And Lord, we seek to see more souls saved. Lord, throughout the next few weeks, let us run into people. Let, bring them into our paths that we could find hungry people hungry for you. And Lord, you would give us the boldness and the words to say to invite them to a Bible study, to invite them to the house of God, that they may be saved. Lord, we know that you would, that none would perish, but all would come to repentance and be saved and we want to have that same mentality we want the mind of Christ in this church and we thank you for it and we bless your name for it all in the wonderful name of Jesus in Jesus name we pray help us sing tonight as we continue to worship the Lord hitting 
Amen. Let's lift our hands in the presence of the Lord and enjoy His presence. Acknowledge His presence. Hallelujah. We serve a holy God. Let's lift up holy hands today in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. You have brought holiness to our lives. You brought victory to our lives. Amen. It's how we are able to lift up holy hands is because He has brought holiness to us. Amen. And we are able to clap our hands, all ye people, and shout with a voice of triumph because He has brought victory to us. Amen. Could we do that right now? Let's clap our hands. The Bible said clap your hands, all ye people. Shout unto the God with the voice of try. Just lift your head. Amen. Turn your head toward God. Let God know I'm thankful today for victory in my life. Praise God. Praise God. If you don't have the victory, you need to purpose in your mind today that before I leave this place, I am going to have victory in the Lord. Praise God. Amen. Good to be in the house of the Lord with all you wonderful people. Turn to your neighbor and smile at him. Amen. Let them know it's good to see them in the house of the Lord. If you smile, they'll know you mean it. Praise God. Amen. Good to see everybody in church on this Sunday night. Amen. Praise God. God is doing great things. We are glad of it. Amen. We want to give honor uh, to your good pastor and his wife. We love them and uh, appreciate them. Respect him as a man of God, and I love him as my friend. Amen. We feel the same about his wife. We love her, respect her, and give honor to Brother and Sister Gross as well. We love them. Amen. And all of you, God bless you for your faithfulness to the house of the Lord. Amen. And there's such wonderful talent and ministry in this church, and uh, I, I honor you for your faithfulness to God and all of that. God is worthy of it. Praise God. Amen. One more time, let's just lift our hands in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Everybody settling in from worship. Let's lift our hands and let's invite God into this next part of the service. God, we love you and we need your help in this place. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. We need you to move, God, in the, in the preaching of the word. We want you to have your way. We surrender ourselves to your perfect word. Not the words of a man, but what comes out of the book of life, God, today. We surrender ourselves to it. Minister to us from your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Psalms chapter number 48 and verse number 1, if you'll meet me there. Praise God. Psalms chapter number 48 and verse number 1. I was out of town this morning preaching and somebody received the Holy Ghost and somebody being baptized and we're grateful for that amen and we know God's going to do great things amen right here in Shreveport in the process of this revival amen and uh, don't don't disconnect yourself from that today and say well somebody's going to get something you ought to make up in your mind I'm going to get something amen amen I've I've watched as the word was being preached and you could tell certain ones in the church knew who it was for and they're thinking man i'm so glad they're hearing this because it's so good for them they need to hear this amen i come wanting the word for myself amen i hope y'all get something out of it as well but boy i need something from god today amen that is what i want i'm at the well i plan on getting a drink amen amen great is the lord and greatly to be praised in the city of our god in the mountain of his holiness Beautiful for situation, the joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion on the sides of the north, the city of the great king. I like how the Bible words that there, and there's no mistake, amen, that God's church is the city of the great king. God is known in her palaces for a refuge, amen. How is that? We keep on preaching it, we keep on singing about it. And we keep on testifying about it. Amen. We're making known that God is a refuge. Anybody glad for the refuge of the presence of God in your life? Praise God. Amen. He is our pavilion. I want to preach to us for a few moments uh, from that verse number two, speaking of the kingdom of God, the church. The Bible said it is beautiful for situation, the joy of the whole earth, 
is Mount Zion on the sides of the north, the city of the great king. And I want to preach to us about the sides of the north, the sides of the north. Amen. Let's lift our voice one more time. Let's ask God to have his way in the preaching of the word of God. God, I pray today that you would anoint your word. I pray that you would have your, your way in this place. Let there be clarity, God, in, this, in the speaking and preaching of your good word. And let there be clarity in our minds as we receive your word. And we'll give you the glory for it in Jesus' name. Let's clap our hands for the word of God before we're seated. <laughs> praise God. Praise God. Amen. 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 God bless you. You may be seated. Amen. There are a few things here right at the beginning that uh, I don't think there's any necessity to emphasize because I don't feel like there's very many in the building this morning that would debate these things, that our God is great. Amen. We believe that we serve the great God. Great is the Lord. As a matter of fact, there's just some of these words in the Bible that describe God that I think are very particular to him. We use them to describe a lot of things, amen, but great applies to God most certainly, amen, as well as awesome and amazing and marvelous, amen. We, we experience a lot of things in life and we use those words to describe what we're seeing, we use those words to describe what we are experiencing, Amen. But the Bible's very plain and sets it beyond the reach of debate. Great is the Lord. Amen. And because he is great, the Bible said that we should give him the praise that is due his name. Amen. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised in the city of our God. Amen. He is worthy of great praise because he is a great God. Amen. And the Bible tells us that his name Amen. The name of God is excellent in all the earth, and because his name is excellent, he deserves excellent praise. We should be very careful, amen, to give God excellent praise. I watched some folks doing that on this platform tonight uh, that had practiced their songs and singing and practiced their songs and playing, and they had become excellent at what they were doing, but they were also making, them, making sure they were mindful to be excellent in praising God. Amen. I want to be good at it. I want to be good at it. I want to be like David. Amen. And get to the place where I can praise the Lord with all my might. With all my might. Amen. And not care about being choreographed. Because David sure wasn't choreographed. Amen. Michael looked at him and she was embarrassed. And said, what kind, amen, of a disgrace is this? And David said, amen, you haven't seen anything yet. I'm going to be even more vile the next time. If you call this being vile, then I'm going to the next level in worshiping God. Amen. You should make it a challenge in the process of this revival. However, I praise God tonight when I come back Wednesday. Amen. I'm going to give him more praise. Amen. The adversary is trying to stop me. My flesh is trying to get me to sit still all the excuses in the book are running through my head but I'm ignoring it all and not only am I going to worship God today but next time next time I'm going to come back and give God even more praise <laughs> praise God amen amen now if you've given God no praise in this service that shouldn't be very hard amen to do better next time but I'm just challenging everybody to do better. Great is the Lord, greatly to be praised in the city of our God, in the mountain of his holiness. Amen. I'm telling you that the entire mountain is holy. The minute you start living for God and you start climbing the mountain into a relationship with God, amen, holiness is a requirement from the beginning, from the onset. There has to be a turning away from the world. There has to be a separation from the world as God is calling you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Amen. There has to be a turning of your back on the world. Amen. And begin living your life holy unto God. Praise the Lord. Amen. And then the Bible uses a phrase, and I've got to be cognizant of the time today. I'm already feeling comfortable, and that can be dangerous sometimes. Amen. The verse number two said that Zion is beautiful. Once again, another word that we use to describe a lot of things, sometimes ourselves. 
Amen. Thank you for the four of you that's still listening. Praise God. Amen. Man, I look good today. I, I, I've rarely said those words. It's usually when I forgot to turn the lights on. Amen. Tough crowd. Tough crowd. Praise God. Amen. But beautiful, beautiful. The house of God is beautiful. If I don't have that feeling when I walk in those doors, then I need to adjust some things in my life because this place is beautiful. Amen. I know we're in a temporary space, and it's quite obvious, amen, that there's not a lot of touch-up we can do in here until we get to the place that we are building, amen. But it's not the building that I'm talking about. I'm talking about the place of worship, amen. In the process of the days that you've already been in this sanctuary, it should already be beautiful to you. I have felt God here, amen. God has helped me. God has revived me. God has strengthened me. God has fed me with his word. God has strengthened me with his spirit. Well, praise the Lord. Lord. Amen. When I came in, I found joy here. When I came in, I found peace in the house of God. Amen. This place is beautiful. It's beautiful. Amen. And don't miss out on anything. If you don't feel that way about it, then make the adjustments you need to make so that this place can be beautiful to you. Amen. You can be seated. Now, this next word I've heard preached, and any preacher has, and probably most saints have heard Amen. This, this little phrase in its entirety preached many different ways. That Zion is beautiful for situation. How many in here have situations? How many in here are human? I hope some more hands will go up. I'm getting worried. Praise God. All right. Amen. Everybody in here is human. We all have situations. Uh, I heard one word right there. Somebody said, yeah, but soon as the church service is over, people will go out and start talking about their situations. I got this weird mole, amen, I got this weird ache, this weird pain, been dealing with this, been, we all have situations, amen, sometimes that pain is a family member, sometimes that situation, amen, is marriage, and there's a lot of stuff that goes on, amen, we all have situations, if you don't have one today, you'll have one tomorrow, it's just the way that life works, Amen. And I've heard it preached that coming into the house of God is beautiful for your situations. The best place that you can go with your situations. And I'm not going to say to you today that that's not correct. Amen. Because the house of God is the best place to bring your situations. This is where we cast our cares on him because we're made aware through the word of God and the singing and the testimonies that he cares for us. We bring our burdens here and we lay them on the altar. Amen. We bring our headaches here and we give it to God. We bring our stress and our depression and our oppression. Amen. And chains are broken and we are freed in the house of God. Amen. This place is beautiful for situation. If you've got a situation, I'm here to tell you God is here. God is here to help you with your situations. God is good at working in people's lives and changing their lives. Amen. And so I'm not going to take that away because it is true that the house of God is beautiful for, amen, your situations. The second way that we've heard it preached is that Zion is beautiful for the way that it is set up. And I believe that's true. I believe it's been the will of God, amen, the things that have been set up in the church that are so important, amen, based in the word of God, a pulpit made of wood where the man of God, your good man of God, preaches the word of God to you, an altar where we can be reconciled, where we can be revived. Amen. Where souls can be saved and lives can be changed. That's all been set up for a reason. Amen. We got loud speakers because even a big mouth like me, amen, every now and then needs some amplification. Amen. We've got chairs. We're not sitting in here, amen, like we're at one of those Middle Eastern restaurants, amen, our Asian restaurants where everybody sits on the floor Indian style. Amen. We get to sit in a nice chair. Take them out and see how many folks start complaining. Amen. There's people complaining about the ones we got. But you take them out and put everybody on the floor and everybody be complaining. Be trying to find a pillar to lean up against so that they could get some back support. Amen. Thank God. We love how it's set up. Amen. Everything is trying to enhance the move of God to make it so there's no distractions and nothing that we have to deal with. We're working service after service to make sure, amen, your pastor's diligent about it. The team that he's got is diligent about it, making sure there's no distractions so that God can move. Amen. Instead of criticizing, pray. 
and say, God, help our church. We want to have revival. Amen. We want to see souls saved. Amen. Give them wisdom. Give them the ability. Amen. Lay your hands on the sound system and pray for it. Lay your hands on the pulpit and pray for your pastor. Well, praise the Lord. Lay your hands on the rows of pews and say, God, let somebody sit in this row, amen, on this church night and receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Let their lives be changed. Amen. I love how church is set up. I see people overly tampering with it. Amen. And making it into something other than apostolic church. It is beautiful for the way it's set up. Amen. I'm going to tell you scripturally, though. That is not what this verse is telling us. It's not telling us in this portion of Scripture that Zion is beautiful for your situations. The Bible says that throughout. Amen. That we should bring our troubles to the house of God, to the sanctuary where we find our help. Amen. It's not telling us that it's beautiful for set up here in this Scripture. Amen. But we are told, amen, over and over again about what happens in the house of God because of what is facilitated in the house of God. Amen. But this reference here is made, amen, concerning elevation. If you look at that word, amen, situation, it's not talking about necessarily the way the pews and the pulpit are set up. It's talking about the fact that God has situated the church on a mountain. It is an elevated place. The minute you walk through that door, into church tonight, you were walking uphill. Your flesh might not have liked it. It might have took some effort on your part before you even left your house. You knew when I come into this place, amen, I'm going to have to put some effort into it. Amen, if I'm going to get something out of it, I'm going to have to put some effort into it. And it's going to take some sweat. And I'm going to have to burn some calories, amen, and some carbohydrates. But I believe it's worth it, amen, because the house of God has been put where it's at for a reason. This is an elevated place. It's not a honky-tonk. It's not a club. Amen. It's not just a place where we gather and play games. Amen. It is a place of elevation. When I walk through those doors, I am climbing higher in my life. I am approaching God the minute I walk through those doors. Amen. It is an elevated place. It's an elevated place. And it's been set up for you to make the climb. You walk in, wonderful choice. You're beginning the journey. When you walk in, Pre-service prayer. What are we doing in our minds and in our hearts? We're separating ourselves from the things that we just walked out of. God demanded that of Moses. He said, take off your shoes. This, this isn't the place. This is holy ground. This isn't the place to track things in. Amen. I said you can bring your troubles to the house of God, but God doesn't want you tracking them through the service. Amen. Oh, brother. I have seen people track their spirits right through the house of God. They want everybody to know they're not happy. Amen. And if you don't know, they'll make sure you know. If, if you don't see their crossed arms, they'll. They want you to know, I'm upset. They bring, they're tracking their spirit. This is holy ground. Amen. We need to have some reverence and respect for the house of God. Amen. I want to leave my shoes at the door and preferably get something from the presence of God. Amen. Where I don't want dirt when I walk out the door. I want my shoes cleaned. Amen. I want to be able to track the presence of God out into the world. Amen. And be a light to the world and be the salt of the earth. That's the will of God. Amen. God wants you to leave what you had at the door and get something so profound that you pass it right up forgetting what you were ever dealing with when you came in the door. Somebody clap your hands if that's what you want tonight. Thank God for church. Thank God for church. Amen. It's beautiful for its elevation. And the Bible tells us, and I think I quoted it the other night, that the blessing of the Lord it, everybody say it, God's blessings alone, the blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich, and he addeth no sorrow to it, amen. And then the Bible speaks here in the same singular focus. It says that Zion is the joy of the whole earth. There is no, there is no, amen, substance, there is no entertainment, when I was young, I enjoyed the funny papers. Amen. There was, there was no laugh that I got from the funny papers. Calvin and Hobbes, the far side. 
That shows you how weird I am. Amen. Because I understood fully the far side. Nobody else in here read the funny papers? Amen. Maybe you need to. Praise God. Might help you out a little bit. Amen. You're not going to get joy out of anything else in this world that can compare. Because the house of God has been set up to be the joy of the whole earth. In his presence is fullness of joy. And at his right hand where the power of God is moving, amen, is pleasure forevermore. Amen. There's nothing like the house of God. I'm going to emphasize it over and over for the next few moments. There is nothing like the house of God. We need to treat it with the reverence it deserves. Beautiful for situation. Beautiful for elevation. The joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion. Somebody clap your hands if you believe the house of God is the joy of the whole earth. Then it says something that's very peculiar. Amen. And I don't believe that I have ever preached anything that has not been preached before. I'm not that silly. Amen. But in my lifetime, I've never heard anybody reference what is meant by the sides of the north. Now, everybody in here, when you, when you talk about the north, our mind would go to the compass. Amen. And from Louisiana to Michigan is north. Am I correct? You can go south, but it's going to take you a long time. <laughs> and you might have frostbite before you get there. Amen. You'll have it when you get there, but you'll probably have it before you get there. Amen. That's, that's what we consider north, but... Scripturally speaking, the word north here is not talking about from here to Michigan or here to Arkansas or here to Tennessee or wherever. It's speaking about elevation. The reference here is to the top of the mountain. The north, the north is the very top of the mountain. Now pay attention just for a moment. I know you have been, but this is so important. Coming to the house of God. It's beautiful for its elevation. It's beautiful, amen, that it lifts you up just walking through the doors. But the house of God, just being here in the house of God, can only get you to the sides of the north. Amen. Not everybody that comes to the house of God is going to make it to the north. Oh, you get so close because the worship is here. Amen. The presence of God can be felt passing by here. Amen. In the preaching of the word of God, you can see him. Amen. As he is declared through the word of God. Amen. He's right there. We're so close. Amen. But there's extra effort that has to be involved once you come to the house of God. Amen. It is beautiful for elevation, but it's the sides of the north. Amen. Once I get to this place, there's still some clouds. Timing. Once I make my way to the house of God, there is still some climbing that has to transpire, has to take place in order for me to reach the most high God. Amen. In the palaces of Zion, he is known for a refuge. Amen. But the whole purpose of the house of God is to let you know how great he is, what he can do, who he is, and then to encourage you to climb up while you're in the house of God, while you're in this special place, while you're so close while the presence of God is moving so near to where you are press in to the presence of God and get what you need for your soul amen I don't have my glasses on you ask my family that means I can't see you I can see you but I can't see your expressions amen so if I look in your direction don't get all crossways I'm sorry Amen. However much time it took you to get ready, I can't see how pretty you look or how handsome you look. I just can't. Amen. But I'm going to tell you, it's why people can come to the house of God and be on the sides of the north, but not really be moved, not really be changed, brother. They can be in the building. Oh, it's available to everybody. That's the beauty of the house of God is you've got this wonderful atmosphere, saints of God worshiping, a man of God preaching. Amen, you're a man of God. The music is playing. Amen, all these wonderful things are happening, and it's lifting us up even farther than we were when we walked in the door. Amen, it's a beautiful thing, but there's still a journey that you have to take by yourself. On the side of Mount Everest, you can be a layman. 
as far as climbing is concerned. You can be a novice, and you can go to base camp. Base camp has an elevation. It's at a certain point, amen, and everybody just kind of hangs out there, but it's only those that have prepared themselves and came to that place with purpose that are going to make that climb. They have to be set in their minds. I hope somebody hear me today because I'm not here just to preach a sermon. I really want to help somebody to understand what needs to transpire in this place. Do you know when they leave, when they leave base camp, behind them there's still a crew that have no intentions on summiting that mountain. They're just there to help. They pack bags. There's medical personnel that's there. Hey, man, there's people that know a lot about the mountain but have never been to the top. It's only an elite few. It's only a special few that have made their way. And they have to set in their mind that if I make this journey, I'm going to have to walk past some dead people to get to the top of this mountain. You know, on the side of that mountain, I haven't looked at the latest, but there are bodies there that have never been removed that are sitting right on the side of the trail, frozen solid, because they weren't fully prepared they hadn't really got their mind invested. They, they, they hadn't been careful enough to summit that mountain. Hey Amen. And there they are. And that person, and I've seen this happen in church, that person that wants to summit the mountain, they, they, they want to touch the Most High God. They, they want to get to the north where God dwells. They're thankful to be on the side of the mountain, but that's not what they came for. They didn't just come to church. They came to touch God. Amen. They didn't just go to Mount Everest. They went there to summit that mountain and reach the peak like so few have. Amen. But there are those that begin that journey. And when they start coming across them bodies, the dead folks that aren't moving, they're not doing anything, there are those that will see that brother and it will strike fear in them and they'll turn around. I've watched people that God was dealing with. God was wanting to move on them. God was wanting to help them. God had something great in store, and don't fool yourself today. Amen. God has exactly that for everybody in this building. There's a miracle waiting on you for all those situations that we raised our hand about. Amen. There's a miracle waiting on you. There's help in the presence of God. There's strength in the presence of God. Whatever your need is, there's an answer in the presence of God if you'll press into the presence of God. Amen. But I'm here to preach to you. Don't let the dead folks stop you. Amen. Those that didn't come prepared, those that don't really have their mind invested and didn't take time before they came into the service to get in the right mindset to summit the mountain, you just keep on moving. Amen. Because there's a blessing at the top that you don't want to miss out on. There is something available in this service right now that you don't want to walk out of this building without. It's for everybody in this place, but you got to take advantage of being at the sides of the north and put that extra effort in to summit the mountain and receive what God has for your soul. Somebody clap your hands if you want it. Come on, I'm trying to stir something up in somebody. Amen, I want a touch of God. Amen, if you want it, nothing can stop you. The dead folks can't stop you. The effort that has to go into it won't stop you. The atmosphere around you won't stop you. Hey, man, you're going to press up because I came for this. Those people that made it to the mountaintop were those, hey, man, brother, that, that in that base camp, they weren't laying back saying it's so nice to be at Everest. Every day they're looking out their tent at the top of that mountain. They're watching weather reports. They're paying attention to everything around them because they came for no less than to touch God. Amen. What I'm preaching to you tonight is truth. Amen. Everybody give me your attention just for a moment. I'm only going to be a few minutes longer. Amen. God's calling us today. God's inviting us to something amazing, something wonderful. Amen. But it takes somebody that's hungry for it, tired of status quo, tired of the same old, same old. It's always been available here. It's right here in this place. But somebody's got to say, I can't sit in the pew and just abide the service again. I can't make it to the final song and then realize I made no efforts. 
Amen. Praise God. Amen. Let's lift our hands and let's pray right now that God would have his way. Amen. Whatever the circumstances may be, in the name of Jesus. Come on, let's lift our voice, saints of God. Amen. We love you, God, and we thank you. You're so good to us, God. You're so good to us. You're so good to us. Come on, let's lift our voice and pray. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. You are our help, God. I will look to the hill from which cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise your name, God. Praise your name, God. Amen. Amen. The house of God is the joy because it's where the presence of God moves. Amen. But somebody, somebody has to reach out and grab a hold of it for themselves. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Somebody's got to want what I'm preaching right now. God is in this place. He's in this place. But it's only those that will get past, amen, just the norm and press in a little farther. I'm so glad to be in church, but I didn't come here just to be in church. I came here because of where this gets me. It gets me close to God, amen, and while I'm here, I need to reach out and touch him, amen. I preached a service, and I've told this story before. I preached a service in Texas, not too far from here, amen, where a man, it was his last service. I had no idea. He was a young man, strong man. It was his last service. Amen. And God called him up. God was calling him up. I don't know that I've ever done that, Brother Jason. I don't know if I've ever stopped a service and just said, you know what, unless God was moving in such a great way that I didn't want to get, I didn't want to get in the way, just let God have his way. Amen. But in that service, I just felt an overwhelming necessity, amen, to stop the service and say somebody needs to touch God right now. And a man came and put his hand on the pulpit and prayed through to the Holy Ghost. And the next day he was gone. Amen. He left this world on top of the mountain. That's the way I want to live for God. Amen. I don't want to be found on the sides of the north just sitting in a pew. Amen. I want to be one of those that came to the house of God and put in that extra effort. Amen. The whole point of this is a relationship with God. The whole point of this is to know him. Whatever it takes, I've got to know him. This one thing I do for getting those those things that are behind and reaching forth, reaching up for those things that are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling. Amen. God is calling us up today higher than you are right now. Higher than you are in this moment. God wants you to come a little higher. Amen. And experience a move of his spirit that will change you and help you. It's the will of God. It's the will of God. Amen. Zacchaeus, how are you going to get something? Just being in the press, being in the crowd isn't enough. You're going to have to climb. Everybody's near Jesus. But if you want him to come to your house, if you want something to happen, amen, for you personally in this encounter, then you're going to have to climb. Amen. And Bark was a flying. Amen. Oh, there was probably scratches and scrapes and all of that. But Zacchaeus said, I've got to see him. That's the way I feel. Amen. I'm glad to see you. I love everybody in God's kingdom. Amen. But I'm at the sides of the north because I want to touch the most high God. I've got to see him. I've got to experience him. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. I referenced this the other night. Martha and Mary, Jesus is in the house, brother. He's there, and I believe God is here. The Bible talks to us over and over about Jesus passing through, Jesus passing by. In one place it even says he made as though he would have gone farther. He passed them by, amen, and he's walking away and he's looking back and there's a hunger that strikes in the hearts of men, amen, to chase him down and get something from him. But at this particular moment, Jesus has literally sat down in the house. He's not going anywhere. He's right there. He's made himself available. There's not even any effort that needs to be involved, amen, in sitting at his feet. And Martha's busy, but she's not climbing. Amen. I can run the aisles and not touch God. 
If I'm just doing it because that's what everybody's doing. There has to be purpose in my mind. Amen. That I've got to feel God. There's got to be a desperation in my worship. There's got to be a hunger in my worship. There's got to be a passion in my worship in order for it to be effective. Amen. And Martha's busy, but she's not getting anywhere. And there's Mary. She has already made the proper decision. And she's placed herself right at the feet of Jesus. And all the wisdom of God who is omniscient, he is all wise, is flowing right down to Mary. And Martha comes aggravated. Don't you see all that needs to be done? Don't you see, amen, how much has to be done in order to host these people that are here? And that was important in Bible times, to host properly. And Jesus doesn't rebuke Mary. He's got a problem with Martha. Mary's sitting there saying, tell me what to do. Martha, sure, she already has it all figured out. Amen. I want to subject myself to the word of God. Like I said, it's not just a preacher. It's, it's the word of God. It's the word of God. Amen. And if he has given his, his, his strength, a preacher, a pastor, given his strength, amen, to preach me the word of God, I want to be the Mary in the situation. I don't want to be over here all busy, amen, but not receiving what God has for me in the moment. Amen. I don't want to be going through motions, amen, and things that aren't going to matter in the end if it's not all behind trying to touch God and trying to reach God. Amen. And he's there just waiting on. Do you understand today? God's just waiting on somebody. Is there anybody? Amen. All, all over this world on this Sunday night, people are putting in the effort. Amen. They're sweating suits down. They're lifting their voice until they're hoarse, trying to touch God all over this world. Let it be us right here in Shreveport. Amen. We don't want to just reach the sides of the north. We want to reach the most high God so the power can flow, so salvation can flow. So deliverance can come. Stand with me if you would. I'm not going to press this any farther today. Amen. Got four more pages of notes plus, plus chicken scratch. Amen. I feel like I'm there right now. I'm at that place. He said, Martha, there's a lot of stuff that needs to happen, a lot of stuff going on. Amen. But the thing that's most needful, the thing that is needful, if we had to stack all this up next to each other, things that we place such priority on, I've seen people so busy about things that they don't even have to be busy about. It's a distraction. We need to be careful about that. Amen. Not allow... Things to just be distractions just to so easily snatch us away from the presence of God. Amen. I'm certainly not referencing this. You need to know that. I'm just saying in the house of God, I've seen people get so busy about so many things, but they're not busy about true worship. They're not busy about prayer, and they're not busy about response to the word of God. Amen. All that stuff going on, and Jesus said, Martha, this is the words of Jesus Christ. He said, one thing is needful. That when Jesus is in the house and you're this close, you're, you're at the sides of the north. You're right there. You're so near that all you got to do is reach out and touch him. He said, Mary has chosen that good part. You want church to be real good again in the pew that you're sitting in? Start coming and sitting at the feet of Jesus. Amen. In order to get there, it's a climb. Amen. And you're going to have to you're going to have to climb past your pride. You're going to have to climb past people's opinions. Amen. You're going to have to climb past distractions. You're going to have to climb past excuses. You're going to have to climb, amen, past, past what you consider reasons. Amen. You're just going to have to keep on climbing until you feel the Shekinah glory of God. And then you can say you had church because that's what it's all about. That's the good part. Thank God for everything else that makes this the sides of the north. Amen. But the good part is using this place of elevation to reach up and touch God. 
Amen. Jesus led them as far as Bethany, and they're standing at what essentially is the foot of a mountain. And he's saying, go and tarry in Jerusalem, which was a climb from where they were, until you be endued with power from on high. And so they climb up to Jerusalem. They get to Jerusalem. Where do they go next? Help me out, somebody. All the theologians in the building. They went to the upper room. They just keep on climbing. They keep on climbing. And then when they get there, the sides of the north, they're all gathered together. Amen. It is church time. Amen. In Jerusalem, the people of God have gathered together, but that wasn't where they stopped. The Bible said they were with one accord in prayer and supplication. They knew it wasn't just about being in the upper room. It wasn't just about being gathered together. We need to reach up and touch the summit of this thing. Amen. We need to reach up and as they began to pray in one accord, in one place, suddenly there came a sound from heaven. Amen. Amen. Draw nigh unto me, and I will draw nigh unto you. Amen. As of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. Amen. The Holy Ghost was poured out in the house because they weren't content with the sides of the north. They wanted the Most High God. They wanted the presence of God to fall on them. Amen. I want every head bowed, every eye closed in this house. I'm not one to over-spiritualize things in regards to myself. I've been fighting a battle all afternoon in my mind about this service. God knows what He's doing, and as I surrendered myself to His will. Amen. But now as we stand in this building, it's being made clear to us through the Word of God, and I give us so many more instances. Maybe Joash with Elisha. What a moment that was. And you can tell by Joash's reaction to Elisha that he had such respect for that man of God. But even right there where Joash was with the man of God, just like we're in the house of God today, Joash had to do some climbing and he wasn't willing to put in the full effort. And he missed out on the full blessing. I don't want to miss out. The Word of God is letting us to know today that coming to church is needful because it gets you to the sides of the north. It gives you that extra boost. It gets you so close to God, but you've got to take that, take advantage of that and move those extra few steps. It is a solo climb. It's a solo approach. Bible said that they were with one accord. It means they all, as individuals, gave themselves to the seeking of God. But when the Holy Ghost fell, the Bible said it fell on each of them. It filled the house, but there's a very important part of that. God wants to have an individual encounter with you. I've heard him talk about getting to the top of Everest. Even if there's others involved in the climb, it's such an isolating moment to know you did that. You made that climb. You put in that effort. There's other people there, but they didn't pull you up the mountain. There's other people there, but they didn't push you up the mountain. You made the climb. How important is a touch from God to you in this service? We value so much the house of God, and if you're able, you need to be in the house of God every chance you've got. Because it is the sides of the north. God has made it so that there's nowhere you can get to God, amen, but through the house of God. I know you can pray at home. I know all of that, amen, but God has made it a necessity to come to the house of God. Forsake not the assembling of yourself together. Wherever we are in our walk with God, there's been, amen, those moments in the house of God that has gotten us there. We're standing, I believe, today at base camp in this service. There's healings that need to be experienced in this place. 
There's deliverance that needs to be experienced in this place today. There's people that have dabbled in things, and you need God to help you shake it loose. Amen. There's situations we're struggling with on the inside that nobody knows about, and we try to cover it in a dress and a suit. Our nice shirt and slacks. We, we come, amen, and have set ourselves up in a way to try to get people to believe everything's A-OK, -okay, but we know it's not. It's a daily struggle. I'm telling you that the answer is right here, and you're so close. You're only a prayer away. You're only a few, few short steps away. You can come to this altar tonight. Don't let it just be about coming to church again things that you heard this weekend for those of you that were here the thing that we draw from that and we already knew was we have a short time the adversaries come down in great wrath and the Bible says there's an open door for us but there is many adversaries the devil's going to try to stop you from what God's calling you to right now do you know the devil's okay with you coming to church as long as you don't go any farther there's people that go to church for years and have no intention of doing anything when they're on their way to the house of God, and the devil's okay with that. But it's those that come seeking. It's those that come asking, and it's those that come knocking that the adversary is going to war against. But the Bible said it's a great door and effectual. It's worth the effort. It's worth the fight. If you can get through that door, amen, if you can press through what God is opening up in this place right now, amen, there are wonderful things available in this altar. Right where we're standing for a moment, let's lift our hands and acknowledge the presence of God. Come on, somebody, lift your voice right now. Your reaction to this message, is it me, to me it's nothing. It's God's word. You're, you're not reacting to me as a preacher. I've, I've got way past that in my ministry. But I want somebody to react to the invitation of the Almighty in this place. I appreciate your attention. I appreciate your response. Amen. But let it all be for God today. Amen. Everything I'm doing is to touch Him. Amen. It's not in the worship. Thank God for that. It gets me close. It's not in the preaching. Thank God for that. It tells me what needs to happen. But it's in my effort afterward. Amen. That gets me to the top of the mountain. It's that push, that final push. It's that final effort at the end of the service. After I've been brought to the sides of the north, it's that final push to get to the top of the mountain. Is there somebody today that needs something from God that's willing to step out of your pew and make that final final climb. Amen. I need a touch from God. I need a miracle in my body. I need a miracle in my spirit. Come on. These altars are open today. God wants to help somebody. Amen. If you'll come and make that approach, God will meet you here. Lift your hands. I'm not here, God, just to be at church. I'm here for the God of Bethel. I didn't come just to Bethel. I came to El Bethel. Amen. I need an experience with God that will touch me and change me and make a difference in my life. Come on, let's lift our voice in the house of God today. Come on, Calvary, touching Jesus is all that matters. Thank God for the house of God. And now I need to take advantage of it and reach out and touch him from the sides of the north. Amen. I need his refuge. I need his strength. I need his salvation. I need his healing. Come on, God's watching right now. God's got his eyes on us. Is there anybody that needs him in this place? Oh, there's many right now that are reaching out, but let it be you also. Not without me. I need a touch from God. Come on. Some of those that haven't broke through in a while. Hey, man, you need to make that extra effort and press in close to this altar. There's a lot of space up here. I need a touch from God. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what your name is. Everybody needs God. Everybody needs what's available right now on this altar.
Come on, somebody. The word will not profit not being mixed with faith. And faith believes that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. The word is calling us to that today. The word only profits if I believe God's a rewarder, so I'm going to put the sweat into it, and I'm going to put the effort into it. Amen. This is for God. This is for God. I need a touch from you, God. Whatever you're struggling with, bring it to Jesus. Whatever your circumstances, bring them to Jesus. Put in the effort. Climb up, climb up, climb up. You're close to somebody, it's appropriate. Wrap your arm around their shoulder and pray for each other right now. The Bible said, bear ye one another's burdens. Come on. Let's pray for each other today. Sometimes it's easier to have faith for somebody else than it is for yourself. That's it. You're right there. You're right there. We're at the sides of the north. Put in that little extra effort. A man told me they call it the vertical. It's that final reach. It's that final effort. Somebody put that effort in. It's worth it. When you get to the top, you'll be so glad you did. Listen to this preacher. There's some folks that haven't been there in a while. You need to take advantage of this. I don't know this church real well. We're getting there. Hey, man, but there's some folks I feel in the Holy Ghost that need to put that effort in that haven't done it in a while. I'm seeing a lot of the same people praying that I've seen the last several services. Hey, man, God's calling everybody. God's calling everybody in this place. And who wouldn't want to touch him? Who wouldn't want to experience his presence? It's been a long time, preacher. Well, today's the day. Today's the day of salvation. Now is the acceptable time. I said, if you got your arm around somebody, hey, man, pray for them. Please pray for them. You may have no idea what they're struggling with right now. Touch my brother. Touch my sister. Lord, I pray. Come on, if you're spiritual at all, you know we're in a battle right now. You can feel it in this altar. I need some warriors right now to press through. I need some warriors right now to break through. We're not afraid of a battle. We're not afraid of a fight. Hey, man, we can win it if we'll start fighting. Somebody press through. Somebody press through. Hey, man, we're going to have a move of God at Calvary. We're going to have a move of God in this place. We're going to have revival. We're going to see folks revived, and we're going to see new folks saved by the power of the Holy Ghost. We'll accept nothing less because we've got God on our side, and with God all things are possible. Oh, that's it. Come on, let's fight for this altar right now. This is your altar, Calvary. This is your altar. Amen. This is where you come and touch God. Let's fight for it today. Don't be part of the opposition. Be part, amen, of the kingdom of God fighting for our territory, for our ground. Come on, Shama. Come on, Shama. Fight for what's yours in this house. on let's press in a little bit reach out reach out pray with somebody in this place amen 
I'm here, I'm here for a month, but this is your church, Calvary. Hey, man, let's work in this altar right now. Hey, man, this is your revival. This is your moment. Hey, man, come on, somebody touch God today. If it's been a long time since you broke through and felt the power of the Holy Ghost, hey, man, let's not wait for another service. Let's not put it off to another day. Holy Ghost is moving on people in this altar. Hey, man, be a part of what's going on right now. Come on, somebody.
standing in this pulpit a few moments ago. That story of, of Moses at the burning bush came back to my mind. Amen. And he said, take off your shoes. The place you're standing is holy ground. Once we come to the house of God, it's, it's, not, about, it's not about physical things. It becomes about spiritual things. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God. God was telling Moses, the thing that you take to travel everywhere else you go isn't going to work here. This is a spiritual journey. Amen. And in this place today, we have mighty weapons. If you read your Bible, everything that God said he was going to do, that he was going to set his throne in the north, and, and that he was going to set his kingdom in the sides of the north, the adversary said he would do the same thing. Right there in that place, there's a stronghold. The adversary is going to fight us. He's not going to let us touch God without a fight. It's going to take a fight, saints of God. But we have mighty weapons through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And things that seem so basic are so mighty. And I feel like if we'll lift our hands in the presence of God right now and lift our voice just for a few more moments, amen, whatever else is standing in the way in this service, God, amen, through God, we can tear it down. Amen, whatever we're dealing with in our heart and our mind, whatever the adversary is trying to bring against us, amen, God will help us if we will use the weapons that he has given us. We've got to get to the north. Touching Jesus is all that matters. Come on, somebody, let's tear down some strongholds. Somebody pray in the Holy Ghost today. Somebody press into the presence of God today. Calvary, just for a few moments. I'm done, but for a few moments, let's lift our voice and let's pray apostolic. Come on, somebody. Just like the upper room, just like the upper room. We're not satisfied until we touch you, God.
speaking for myself in case you don't know where I stand. I don't want to stay at base camp. That's not where I want to be. Amen. I feel like I'm in a room full of people that feel the same way. We don't want to stay here. We don't want to stay at this place. And I, as much as I love y'all, and I love seeing your faces when I get up here and preach, I don't want it to be just you here. I want somebody sitting beside you. Amen. The reason, the whole point of this church, the reason that we're gathering together is not just so we will make it to heaven. That's why you come in part. But we're here to reach the lost. We're here to reach the hungry. Let me say that. That God is drawing in this city. And I, it's hard to comprehend sometimes that there's hungry in this city, but I guarantee you, God is calling somebody here. He's reaching some of you. You're around somebody that He's calling for right now. Amen. I know we're tired. I'm tired. But I don't want us to stay here. I want us to move on. Amen. Even this whole weekend, we're talking about the end time events that are coming. That ought to inspire us and encourage us to reach out to somebody else, to bring somebody here. Amen. Well, I, I won't continue. Is somebody with me? Is somebody with me here? Amen. Amen. And I want you, as a matter of fact, let's pray one more time in closing. Let's bind together for God to bring the revival that we know He's promised here. That we can reach, to open our eyes, that we can reach that person that's hungry right now looking for a place. There was a young man here this weekend. I was hoping he'd be here tonight. Just laying in his bed.